got a few new toys today. But anyway, we're back at Top Car looking at this Z3. And you might think, okay, it's getting a bit older than the truth. What's so exciting about it? Well, convertibles, you know? It's summer. Well, you'd think it was. So let's take a closer look. BMW went shy about putting their logo all over everything. And look at the size of these vents. This particular model is a 99 1.9 litre four cylinder petrol engine hooked to a five speed manual box. And it generally feels not too bad. It's not quick, but it's nippy ish. And that's good enough. I still remember laughing at them when they first came out and their weird and unusual styling. And I remember laughing even harder when it became a Bond film car with Pierce Brosnan and Goldeneye. Uh, you know something? The more I spent time looking at this and its lines and especially its interior, the more I actually started to appreciate this thing for what it is. It's not really as bad as I first thought. Yes, the looks are a bit questionable, but you know, it's not in a bad way. The Z3 really shows its age at the back end. This is where you see it the most. It's very 90s. There's other little quirky bits here and there. You'll notice the bonnet and the wings, the way they put the engine in, and the giant space on the right-hand side. I think they could have maybe laid it out a bit better. Maybe it's like that for weight distribution for some reason, but I don't think so. And look at this front end. Look how much wasted space there is in there. I don't know quite what they were thinking. I gotta admit, I have a love for these doors. Just a classic retro style with the leather. And for some weird reason, you get an ashtray here, but you also get another one over here on a convertible. On a convertible. Think about that for a second. Fuel filler caps on the driver's side. That's a nice touch. The seating itself is black leather with a textured black insert, which looks quite nice and classy. The seats themselves are partial electric. And that's not too bad. I can handle that. And then, of course, when we get back up there, when the camera pans back up, it's got the M steering wheel, which is also quite nice. Behind the seats, there is actually some space. Not a lot. You're not getting a shopping bag in there, but uh, there's still some room. You can fit, I don't know, something in there. Then, of course, you've got these two interesting little pockets, which have a lock on them. This is really interesting. So the top one, you press the top button, and it opens this one up, which is sort of deep, but a funny shape. Then you press that one to get the bottom one. And the bottom one is a tiny little thing. I don't know what you do with that. Surely that could have been better designed. Moving down the way, there's my makeshift cup holder, the handbrake itself, the little silly ashtray. Don't ask me why you'd have ashtrays in a convertible, but hey, you know, a hazard light switch, novel position. And I like the fact that it's not bright red, it's blended nicely. And then the electric window buttons because they decided not to put them on the doors. But here's the weird thing. They put the electric mirrors on the door. So why didn't they put the electric windows on the door too? I don't know. Anyway, moving on, the manual gear stick is fine. It's maybe a little bit oversized at the top, but that's probably a BMW thing. 12 volt socket, standard controls from that era. The 80s and 90s tended to have dials like that all the time. We're at least a bit more different with them these days. And then this lovely classic stereo. This is the sort of stereo that I would have had when I was first learning to drive. Look at that. It takes me back. It really does. The vents are very Volkswagen-ish. These light controls are pretty retro too. You pull them out. That's kind of awesome. I like that. Dials, crisp, clear and old school. They just do what they're supposed to do. And I quite like that about them. It would appear this car has airbags, which is also nice. And the glove box is, well, quite a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So that's nice. So yeah, I've only got my small tripod with me because the big one wouldn't fit. But anyway, um, let's talk about this roof system, shall we? It's really easy. Just grab hold of it and you pull it up and over. 
and there's two little hooks in here so you have to release the clips which I'll show you in detail in a minute on both sides which pulls the hooks out then you just pull it over and down it goes and then you clip it back in from the inside hopefully you can still see me so you push it down into position and then you clip it in I'll need it on the other side as well there you go and push the clips together there you go the roof is on and to release it is really simple as well pull the clips again and it pops the hooks out which hold it in place and then back it goes and you push it down and then you put the cover over it it's really easy so luggage space now I know what you're thinking it's a convertible I don't expect much and yeah you're kind of right but it has more than you think it would and it doesn't have to share with the roof which is a bonus you'll notice though we do have the leather cover there for when the convertible is down and it's a bit of an odd shape but it is bigger than you'd expect when she's only done 69,000 miles it was obviously a weekend car for somebody when you actually get out there on the road the gear changes are slick and smooth you don't wind up with any kangarooing because you're getting used to the clutch it is a bit heavier than a lot of the cars I've driven recently but it's still good and yeah like I said the, the classical retro look on the inside it's no bad thing maybe on the outside it, it's not aged very well but in here it feels kind of timelessly classic okay turn the circles all right it's got that weird BMW force over reverse which I'm not a huge fan of And like I say, the steering's a little bit too hard. You have to put quite a bit of effort in. And it's the reason why I'm using two hands. But then again, like I say, that doesn't work too badly against this thing. Considering what it is. Ah, it gives you more power right up on the revs. Oh, there's actually a slight kickback between four and a half to 5,000 revs. And that's pretty much 70, fairly leisurely. You'd think with it being convertible, there would be lots of engine noise, lots of road noise, and a great deal of wind noise. But surprisingly, it's not as bad as you'd think. And let me just reiterate again, I, I love this classy interior. I really do. I just can't help talking about it. It's great to drive too, funnily enough. And here's the thing. This is the second smallest engine size available in the Z3. This 1.9 only generates about 138 brake horsepower, but you also get the ridiculous 3.2 liter straight six. And yep, that's the M3 engine. And yes, it's over 300 horsepower. I would imagine that in a Z3 would be downright scary. It would probably be a whirlwind of destruction. Totally unusable, probably deadly, and it would certainly make it incredibly front heavy. As it stands, it seems to be fairly well balanced with the 1.9 in it. And it does seem to corner pretty good, considering it's got all its engine at the front and all its power at the back. Anyway, it's 2019 now, so this car is pretty much 10 years old. Is it still worth buying now? Well, if you're looking for a cheap, fun convertible that can be had for less than three grand, I don't think these too bad an option, really. I found it good fun to drive, I loved its retro feel, the outside was a bit hit or miss with me. I could live with it. Maybe I'll be hunting around for a Z4 if I can find one cheap enough. I don't really like the idea of having an MX-5, <sighs> no. I'm not really a big fan of them overall. But yeah, this thing's not a bad option if you're looking for a cheap convertible to have a bit of fun with. And you can tell this one's been looked after. You can tell the previous owner didn't put a lot of miles on it, and you can tell he cleaned it and looked after it every day. I think the only blemish I found was on the headrest of the driver's seat. It had been patched or repaired at some point. So what can I say about this car? Well, it's retro. I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun for not a lot of money. Can't really go wrong, can you? See you next time. I had a lot of fun making this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Like and subscribe if you did. 
And don't forget to drop in the comments if you think there's something I could change or if you want to recommend a car that I should be doing, especially if you can provide it. I'm always grateful for anybody wanting to take the time to help me improve my channel. So anyway, look after yourselves and we'll see you all in the next one.